features. Even when they're magnified, it's hard to see their features. They're tiny infinitesimal, so small that makes you doubt. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. The compass. Simkanolik, what you doing here? We're not Simkanolik. We're courageous pirates. Yeah, pirates. And today we leave home for the sea. Are you with us? Yes, I am. Hooray! You mean no? No hooray? Oh, yeah. You can't join us without a test. Go and find a special thing. Something no sailor should ever sail the sea without. I can do it, but how? with a map, and it's over there. <laughs> I've never seen a map that's this puny. What are you talking about, puny? That took us a half hour to make. From where you're standing now. Uh-huh, from here you mean. I guessed it right. First head to the north until you will find... Hold on, but where's the north? It's where the North Pole. Ice and polar bears are. But how do I know which direction the North Pole is? By compass, of course. A compass is a special tool that helps sailors and pilots know in which direction they're traveling, whether in the air or on the sea. Our planet is like a big magnet that has two poles, the North Pole and the South Pole. These magnetic poles help the needle in the compass find its way. The needle is magnetized, so one of its ends will be attracted to the north magnetic pole and point at it, while the other end will always point towards the south. That I know, but there's no compass around here. Then let's make one by ourselves. Out of what? We can use a needle. We just have to magnetize it. And how's it supposed to turn around? In a saucer of water. in the direction of north and the other to the south. But which point's where? Well, there's the window, so that can't be the right way. The north is there. I'm really liking this sharp little fella we've got here. You calling me a little fella? No, it's just the way us pirates talk. All right then, north we go. First head to the north until you see a sleeping monster. Ladies ahoy, monster on the horizon. Let him do it himself. <laughs> hmm. Now turn to the left and go 300 paces more. 300? Exactly, I counted on myself. Uh-huh. Okay, then that means I'll go one, two, three. Now straight ahead until you get right up to the giant tree. <laughs> you call that a tree? Wow, amazing! I can't believe my eyes, it's a real ship compass. It's also called a marine compass. The first compass was invented more than a thousand years ago in ancient China. With its help, the Chinese were able to travel across the desert. And about 200 years later, the compass appeared in Europe. Whether the Europeans came up with the idea for the compass themselves or took it from the Chinese isn't clear. But one thing's for sure, we fixies remember how those early compasses were built. The first compasses were made with a magnetized needle on top of a floater inside a bowl of water. Later, the needle was put on top of a pin that let it spin freely, and it started to look like the ones we use today. 
Since the needle of a compass always points to the north, a sailor can easily figure out which direction he needs to turn his ship. If he wants to go north, he follows the needle north. If he wants to go south, he goes in the opposite direction. Your dad brought it home with him late last night from his work. You were asleep. Hold on. I want to check something. What's up? Yeah, they line up together. Of course they line up. If not, how else would you have gotten here? We're done with the needle. It has to go back. First head south, 600 paces. Six for you, matey. a great explainer. Inside of a washing machine is a big drum. People put their dirty laundry in there and add a special kind of soap called detergent. When they turn the washing machine on, the drum fills with water and then the motor starts to spin the drum. That makes the laundry rub together, forcing the soapy water in and the dirt out to make your clothes clean. After that, all that's left is to get out the water by spinning the drum really fast and sending the water down the drain. Oh, thanks a lot, Simka. I always wondered, why would you want to put laundry inside a television? Are you joking with me? Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, I'll show you a funny joke. Get over here. Shh, it's Tom Thomas's mother. She's got headphones on. We're safe. She doesn't hear anything except the music. Now she'll come back, add the soap, turn on her television, and watch the second part of the movie. Again with the jokes. This time I'm really gonna let you have it. Whoa! Nolik, just do what I say. I came up with a plan. What's your plan? To run away! Whoa! to keep in mind with a washing machine to use it right. For example, do you know what can happen if you wash red and white shirts together? Well, the white one might just turn pink. No, it's not because it's embarrassed, but because some of the color from the red shirt happened to get onto the white one. Another important thing to remember is to empty your pockets before you wash your clothes. Things like keys, nails, and chewing gum might not only ruin your clothes, but they can destroy the washer too. And this isn't only about little stuff. Big things like music players and mobile phones have managed to find their way into the washing machine. Oh, sure, these things look nice and clean after a good washing, but they certainly don't seem to want to work anymore. And never, ever put a pet inside of a washing machine. That's just no place for a living thing. You know what, Simka? I've never been laundered in my entire life. We better get out of here, Nolik, right now. And the faster, the better. Ah. <sighs> Come on, let's get.
get going. And what about Chusaka? What about Chusaka? Let her get washed up a little in there. Maybe it'll make her nicer. But she could drown the poor thing. I don't think we can do this alone. We should get help from Tom Thomas's mother. One, two, stop! What? She moved out of the way. And three! Pull it! Huh? What is that? <gasps> oh my goodness! Sweet little baby, how did you get in there? You wait right here in the tub and I'll go get you a towel. So, you wild little beast. Looks like we saved your life. We're friends now? No, like, sure doesn't look like she wants to be our friend. So what do we do now? Same old plan, run! <laughs> Even when they're magnified, it's hard to see their features. They're tiny infinitesimal, so small it makes you doubt. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. The music box. When the Pied Piper began to play his magical <laughs> flute, the rats came out of their holes and followed him. And they never would be seen in Hamlin ever again. Whew. And then what? Huh? I can't read anymore. My legs got tired. Whew. Simka, Nolik, something's rustling in there. In where? In Dad's office. It's on his desk. It's inside the wooden container. Hmm. So maybe there's a mouse inside it. Tom Thomas, sit right here while Nolik and I go and check. And if there's a mouse in there for real, then how are we going to get it out? Those rodents are really so big. And why was I reading that book to you, huh? Just grab a flute, give it a toot, and the mice will scoot. And where are the flutes going to come from? We'll make them. Toot, 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 toot. You got it? <laughs> sure I did. Wait a second. Let's get a little closer. <laughs> See? It's just like I told you. No more mice in there. So let's toot a little more so they won't go back in. All right. So you're the ones messing around out here. Oh, Grandpus, it's you here. All day I can't work on what I need to do. Right from the start, someone's opening up the top, and then you two tooting out. It was Simka who came up with the tooting. Just because you're afraid of mice. Wow, what kind of machine is this? Well, what do you think? Mmm, a coffee grinder? Mm, no. A hole puncher. <laughs> A foot scratcher? What? what? Well, a machine for scratching your feet. <laughs> You're joking all the time, you. It's a music box, and it's just wonderful. <laughs> music boxes were invented more than 200 years ago. Inside, there is usually a cylinder with short pins sticking up from it. In front of the cylinder, there is a comb with metal teeth of different lengths. If you pluck one of the teeth, it will make a pleasant sound. A short tooth makes a higher sound, and a long one, lower. When the cylinder spins around, the pins pluck the different teeth, and music plays. Awesome! So what's broken in here? 
Okay. The spring slipped off. It has to be pushed back into the right place. Will you help? That's better. How come the music's not playing? First, you have to wind up the spring with the key. Tideesh! I know who can wind up the spring. Well, Tom Thomas, can you guess what kind of machine this is? A paper cutter. Uh-uh. How about a hole puncher? <laughs> You're such a joker. Now, don't go and tell me it's a foot scratcher. Then I don't know. Then wind it up with the key and you'll find out. Do you want to know how the higher and lower sounds come out? Put a regular ruler over the edge of a table. Hold down one end of the ruler and pluck on the other. The shorter you make the end hanging off the table, the higher the sound will be. The teeth inside of a music box work the same way. And bells work the same way too. The smaller the bell, the higher it rings. The sound of a violin or a guitar depends on how thick the strings are. Fat strings make a lower sound, and thin strings, a higher one. How tight the string is also makes a difference. Take a piece of string or a rubber band, tie one end to a doorknob, and pull on the other end. With your free hand, pluck the string. The tighter the string gets stretched out, the higher the sound. If you want, you can even play a tune. I think I got it now. It's an old player for music. That's close, but not it. A music box is what they call it. I just said that. So what was it in there, hmm? Just a broken spring. It's not the thing I'm dying to know. Who was moving around there? All I'll say is we, Tom Thomas. Won't let that secret out. Shh. Please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. Shh. Modeling clay. All done. Pack-a-mat. Now look at that. A pack-a-mat made out of modeling clay. But this one's my own. And it looks just like a real one. Okay, you're right. It really does, Nolik. Simka! Nolik, what's up? Hi there, Fire. Wanna play some tag with me? I really wish I could play tag, but unlike you, I've got tons of work. Yeah, like what? Well, a bathroom hook fell down. Tom Thomas broke the lamp on his desk. The aquarium has a tube that's leaking. So go and play. I have to get a pack of mat. Oh, oh, oh. I wish I could play tag. Hold on. Nolik, you've got a pack of mat. Uh-huh. Although I gotta say, it looks a little strange. That's because it's... Let's fix everything before Simka. With your pack of mat and my fixie board. This'll be great. <laughs> So where is that hook that fell down? All right. Nolik, get out some sticky stuff. From where? Obviously, from out of your pack a mat mm, But it isn't real. I made it out of modeling clay today. Out of clay? Well, it totally looks real. Long ago, back in the Stone Age, people learned how to use clay to make their dishes and sculptures. But the modeling clay that we use nowadays was only invented about a hundred years ago. Actually, modeling clay is just plain old clay with some ingredients added so it won't dry out. And dyes are mixed in to make all the different colors. There is just no end to all the fun things you can make out of modeling clay. I got an idea. Go on, turn around. What are you doing? Grabbing glue out of your pack a mat All right, get up here. Will it stick? Yeah, of course it 
will. Let's go and fix the lamp. We can't fix this without a real pack of mat. Yours will work just fine. Tadish! So, what else did Simka have to fix? The aquarium. Hop on. Gonna need a lot of modeling clay. Give me the rest of your pack of mat. Sure. And here's a souvenir. <sighs> they are all done. What's all done? <laughs> we already fixed everything. And what did you fix it with? Modeling clay. <laughs> modeling clay isn't gonna hold anything. Well, I say it will. Wanna bet? All right. What in the world is happening here? Flooding water! You just do as I tell you, without panicking. Did you know it's possible to make modeling clay in your own home? Just write down this recipe. You'll need a cup of flour, a half a cup of salt, and a half a cup of water. Now, mix the salt with the flour and add the water little by little. Mix it together really well. What are you saying? That it looks just like dough? Well, that's exactly what it is. It's just not for eating. It's way too salty. But you certainly can sculpt things out of it. If you want your modeling clay to be colorful, you can add food coloring or watercolors to it. That's it. Your modeling clay is ready to be sculpted. When you're finished, don't forget to let your figures dry in the sun. That way they'll get nice and hard and last you a very long time. <sighs> we almost didn't make it. And did you fix the lamp with that modeling clay? Uh-huh. And the hook, too. That was not a good idea. But it was really quick. Hey, that's true. That's why I want to give a medal to you. You're heroes. For real? Of course you are. And here it is, your medal. But it's made out of modeling clay. Your reward? Fits your heroic deed. But if you need a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fixie, please don't let.